Welcome to this episode of Anycast. This is my podcast on YouTube where we talk about any topic that's going on, mainly sports. And there's a lot of sports to cover, um, but before we do, some big news out of the pandemic world. The FDA approved emergency use of vaccinations, meaning that the vaccine t- to help reduce the COVID is going to be shipped. It is coming out. It is coming. It is coming. It is what we've been waiting for in order to try to get this pandemic under control. But just because the vaccine is now going to be available does not mean we let our guard down. We have to continue to push on and stay strong and continue to do the things that we're capable of doing to help reduce the spread, which is, as I've mentioned in my podcast before, wearing a mask. That is so vital. But it is big news to get the vaccine out. That's really going to help the pandemic. And this could be the beginning of the end of the pandemic. So I wanted to get that out there because I know we've all been waiting to hear some good news. And we're finally getting some good news. Now, transitioning into the sports world. An historic moment, or I should say historic moment, that took place yesterday and then also two weeks ago. For those who don't know, Sarah Fuller, who is a goalkeeper for the Vanderbilt soccer team, happened to be available in order to be a place kicker for the Vanderbilt football team because of their issues with the pandemic, their outbreak that they've had. They haven't had enough players, and so they they asked to see if Sarah Fuller could step in, and I love that she responded with a hell yeah, basically an opportunity to show her capabilities, and she did. Two weeks ago, she became the first female athlete to play in a Power 5 football game when she did a designed pooch kick against my University of Missouri in Faroad Field. So it was awesome for him to, or her, to do that on my field, basically. I think that, that was an awesome moment there. And then Sarah made more history yesterday. She became the first female athlete to score in a Power 5 football game. She made not one, but two extra points. And after the first extra point was made, what really struck with me was the official had the presence of mind, knowing what kind of history is being made here, to run to Sarah Fuller, chase her down, tap her with the football, and say, hey, this is for you. He gave her the football that she kicked to make history. And so I, I'm glad that she gets to keep that football. I think that's awesome what she's doing. It's an inspiration to everyone out there that you can do whatever you want to do as long as you believe in yourself. And as long as you believe in yourself, you have the potential to do anything you want. So she gets a round of applause in my book. I mean, that that's absolutely awesome what she's able to do and what kind of an inspiration she's going to be for so many people. I think that that's truly amazing. Now, that wasn't the only big story out of yesterday. Florida managed to blow their college football playoff hopes by losing to the, well, what's left of the defending national champion LSU Tigers. And the way they lost it was just so 2020. What happened was is that they had stopped LSU on a third down. They're going to get the ball back with about two minutes to go, go down the field, kick a field goal, win the game. One of the Florida players, unfortunately, and, and, and hopefully you don't send any death threats to him because he doesn't deserve this, but unfortunately he's going to be the scapegoat, threw a shoe, and that resulted in a 15-yard penalty, which allowed LSU to keep the ball. They eventually marked down and had a chance at a 57-yard field goal. They used up their timeouts, so now they're scrambling to try to get the field goal unit on. And Dan Mullen bails him out by burning a timeout because he's trying to preserve time in case he makes the kick to try to go back down and tie the game. Well, that's all fine and dandy, except now they don't have to scramble to get the field goal unit out for a 57-yard field goal, which, of course, LSU makes. So then Florida comes right back down the field, they have a chance at a 51-yard field goal to force overtime. The kicker hooks it left. And thus, Florida's championship dreams also hooked to the left. Now, something else you probably noticed in that game, there's a lot of fog in that one. That wasn't the only game that was dealing with fog. The traditional Army-Navy game, because the pandemic will not take that rivalry away like it did some of the other rivalries. 
they played on. They played in, quote-unquote, the Fog Bowl. That's what they're dubbing it. And to my happiness, Army beat Navy, blanking them 15 to nothing. And for the fourth time in five years, they got to sing second. If you've not watched the military schools in action, they have this tradition where the winning team gets to sing their alma mater second. So you that, that's the one thing you want to be second in. So to do that, you have to win the game, which is what they did. What they also did was set up a huge showdown next week with Air Force for the Commander-in-Chief trophy as part of championship weekend because we've also got the ACC title game. Clemson and Notre Dame are set to play each other. They both got the week off. Bama, who got a tune-up as well, leading up to the SEC title game next week against Florida, they dominated Arkansas. So at this point, the way I see it, top five in the playoff rankings come Tuesday are going to remain the same. It's still going to be in this order, Bama, Notre Dame, Clemson, Ohio State, and A&M. Six on back gets interesting because it's going to depend on how far they drop Florida and who benefits from this. But basically, the bottom line is, I think at this point, Ohio State is in the driver's seat to make the playoffs now. This is exactly what they needed to have happen because there was all kinds of speculations as to what happens if a one-loss Florida team beats Bama in the SEC title game and if a one-loss Clemson beats Notre Dame in the ACC title game. Now you got four one-loss teams, and then Ohio State, if they were to finish undefeated, win their conference title... What would happen there? Well, now with Florida losing, they're guaranteed to finish with two losses. So there's no way in heck you're going to leave out an undefeated Big Ten champion in Ohio State, especially since when they have been able to play, they have looked like one of the four best teams in the country. So the way I see it is that Bama is probably in win or lose. Ohio State is definitely in if they win the Big Ten title. Clemson wins, and that pretty much guarantees them and Notre Dame are in. Now, if Notre Dame beats Clemson, Clemson's out, and that opens the door for AM to probably sneak in and be that fourth team to get into the playoffs. I think that's going to be what the scenario is going to come down to. So that'll be interesting to see what unfolds. That's if we get order. If for some reason we have chaos, i.e. Ohio State losing to Northwestern, then it really, 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 really gets interesting because uh, USC is still undefeated. Yeah, you you may have forgotten all about the Pac-12 and you thought, oh, they're done after Oregon got – yeah, USC still undefeated, people. They still have an outside chance to make the playoffs. Obviously, they got to win against whoever they play. We presume it's Washington, but you never know with the pandemic. They may not have a team to play, so they might have to have someone else go in. So, at any rate, depending on, regardless of who plays, it represents the North. If USC wins the Pac-12 title game and finishes undefeated, they're going to need a lot of help in order to make the playoffs, but... They have a chance, and you never know. It's 2020. This has been a crazy year, so anything can happen. So that remains to be seen. Now, moving on to the NFL. It, it's status quo as usual. Pittsburgh, although they've lost their undefeated season, still in good shape to make the playoffs. The reigning champs definitely look like the team to beat at this point. They got a big one today with the Dolphins and Tua Tonga Viola. That'll be a fun matchup to see Mahomes and Tua. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, how about the Cleveland Browns? Yeah, I don't think anybody had them nine and three and off a big win over Tennessee. Um, that that's huge because that that makes Cleveland a bona fide playoff contender. I think they're going to be a a challenge for some teams. If Baker Mayfield can play like he did. They've got the ground game and the defense that can win any type of game. They remind me of last year's Titans. A not so great quarterback. He's solid, not great, but you got a great running game and a great defense. That's going to help you win playoff games. I think the Browns are going to be a dangerous team. You got to watch out for them. Buffalo is another team that I think you got to watch out for. Josh Allen is absolutely amazing to watch. I, I think the Bills did not screw up the draft with that one. I think Allen's going to be a great, great, great QB for years to come. And Buffalo looks like they they're a force to be reckoned with. Dolphins are a sneaky team. The Raiders are a sneaky team. And wouldn't that be something for their first year in Vegas? They, they make the playoffs. Colts are pretty good. I mean, there's some good teams in the AFC. I, I think it's going to be tough to decide it. But all in all, in the end, I think it's basically KC and then everyone else is like one notch below them. On the NFC side, do we know who to trust in the NFC at this point? Seattle loses to the Giants at home. Now the Rams are in the driver's seat to win the NFC West. Tampa looks like a good team at times. I mean, the Packers look really good. The problem with them is you can run the ball on Green Bay and 
chew up the clock, control the ball. That freaking beat Green Bay. The Saints, I mean, what can you say about Sean Payton? It doesn't matter who replaces Drew Brees. They still find a way to win. Sean Payton does a remarkable job of installing the offense based on the QB that he has. It doesn't matter if it's Drew Brees, Teddy Bridgewater last year, this year it's Taysom Hill. The Saints are still finding ways to win, and that's just unbelievable. So is there a clear-cut favor in the NFC? No. Are there good teams that could make it to the Super Bowl and not surprise you? Yes, I think so. Saints, Packers, just to list a couple. You got the Rams who are capable, the Seahawks who are capable, the... I mean, the, the Bucs said when, when they look good, they're, they're pretty capable. And then all of a sudden, how about the New York Giants? We, we, we wrote them off after a 1-7 start. They won four in a row. They beat the Seahawks. They're now 5-7 and seven and control the NFC East. If they can sneak into the playoffs, this could be like their 2007 team and their 2011 team. Somehow they sneak into the playoffs. They're a dangerous team, and then they're going to go find a way to win the Super Bowl. I don't think that's going to happen. But that would be interesting to see if that did. Now, a lot of other teams still in the mix. The Washington football team still has a chance to win the division. They also have a chance now to make the wild card with Arizona reeling. The Cardinals obviously need need help, but at 6-6, six and six, they still have a chance. The Vikings are another team you want to watch out. That's another team that got off to a slow start. It's on a roll now. They're 6-6, six and six, and at the moment, they're in the playoffs. And as injury-riddled as the season has been for the defending NFC champs, you never want to count out the 49ers. And today they got a big one with the Washington football team. Two 5-7 and seven teams, that's basically an elimination game. Although the Washington football team, because they play in that crummy division, even if they lose, still have a chance to make the playoffs. The Niners need this one more because there's no way that they're catching the other teams in the NFC West. The Cardinals maybe, but they're not catching the Rams or the Seahawks at this point. So that that's a, that's a vital game there. So lots to look forward to this Sunday. Um, I hope you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and definitely now that we're approaching winter, stay warm out there. And if you want to enjoy the snow, if you got snow in your area, then by all means enjoy it because we need some kind of happiness. So take care. Hope you guys have a good week.